Hi everyone, I'm Victor. I'm a digital scientist and inclusivity advocate. Um, currently, I serve as a student ambassador at Cool Warriors with our mission to train young brains to become great coders. Um, I'm sorry I'm not able today to present in person. I'm delivering this talk virtually. Um, visa restrictions could not allow me to be there. Uh, it's so painful not to be able to meet you, but I know someday we'll, we'll be meeting. Um, but I'm very happy to be speaking here and to let you know how much I value the honor you've afforded me to be among the speakers for this year's conference. I decided to become a PJ. So thanks to the program committee, program team for making this possible and seamless. You know, when I was when I was going through the program um, for this conference on August to share for this conference, I made it a duty to uh, personally appreciate the program teams um, for the diversity and the incredible work they did in creating the program. It truly shows the um, support for diversity and inclusivity that the community represents. So, uh, just a little exercise now. Um, can you give them a big hand, please? <laughs> so, um, regarding this talk, if you have any questions, you can um, hit me on my social media handles on my Twitter, or let me say X, you can reach me out there, and on Victor Ogunjobi, you can send me a message. On LinkedIn as well, you can message me, and of course, if you want to shoot me an email as so well, you can do that, and I will do well to respond to as many as I possibly can. So, um, here we go, breaking uh, unconscious bias and building products, or let me say generally tech products, or building communities. So I'll be using communities, I'll be using products interchangeably. Here's an outline of everything I'll be discussing in the next, I'll be covering in the next 20, 25 minutes. Uh, a spark of interest here, what actually happens when we build our products? What really happens behind the scene or after the scene when we develop our products and when we build communities generally? You know, when we build products, when we build communities, when we engage in these communities, we do so not just for ourselves, but for other people too. And the value we do that we set examples for other people. Let me tell you that again. When we build products, when we engage in communities, when we generally build communities, we do so not just for ourselves, but for other people too. And the value we do that we set examples for other people. And in doing that, one important thing that we, one important thing that we need to note is that we shouldn't do that poorly. Um, here are some of the nuggets that I high put out down here on how we can understand unconscious bias in our products. One, unconscious bias refers to the automatic and unconscious associations and stereotypes that influences our that influence our understanding and actions and generally in our decision in our decisions. So if you don't mind me checking through some of my notes here, I don't want to miss some important things here. Secondly, um, on how we can understand unconscious bias in our products. It's important that we recognize that everyone has unconscious bias. No one is perfect. Myself, I learned from personal experience on, on building the products on the speech text analytic app. I learned from it and the wake up call that I got on fixing the accessibility issues on, on the app was one of the important lessons I learned in my career. So it's important that we recognize that everyone, they have their own unconscious bias and it can affect the way we perceive, the way we think of and we interact with other people, even people from different races, people from different cultures and backgrounds. So unconscious bias can actually manifest in various ways. And one of the ways, or let me just list out some examples of ways where unconscious bias can play out in favoritism, in thinking of people ahead of others, in exclusions and in unequal opportunities. So uh, I'll show you a very important story. During the COVID pandemic, um, during the COVID era, around 2019 to 2020, while everyone were home, uh, myself and a few others, we, we took on a project with Data Science Nigeria, Data Science Network and Data Science Nigeria, DSM. We were charged with a commission to build an AI product uh, that could solve or improve local health issues in the country. And at first, I personally did not understand why they had to emphasize that. We team up with a medical um, practitioner. They asked us, the charges to include a uh, head tech staff to be included in the product and the project, project team rather. So I was feeling like, why not just make everyone do these things individually and 
just get over this thing, you know, as a young professional then I, my thoughts was just that, let me just do this thing in Buddha and, and get over it. So, um, along the line, but as, as we got practical about the project, project I realized the fact that co-creation is very important in developing AI solutions to meet the needs for everyone, to meet the needs for all users. So specifically, I learned that um, AI solutions, they have unintended consequences. They have unintended results. And especially, they are not designed to with input from, from different stakeholders. So for example, if you have an AI powered project for diagnosis, for diagnosing diseases, just like um, the one I worked on, we are trying to improve or work on a new solutions that will solve local health issues. So, if you have an AI powered system that can diagnose diseases, it could be biased against some certain demographic groups. And if it is not trained on, this, on a specific data set that is applicable, you may have unconscious bias playing out there, or you may have unconscious bias creeping in. Another lesson which is very important that I learned during um, the product development then and during the working on the architect then was that medical and health professionals, they have expertise that is essential for developing these AI products and we must make sure they are accurate, we must make sure they are safe. So for example, if you have potential biases in data and ensure that system is aligned with medical best practices, you need an health tech staff to guide you. It's not something you can just use your own knowledge. So I learned that, I learned the reason, I understood the reason for um, data science Nigeria emphasizing that we have at least a medical practitioner in, in the group or everything to lead us on on these things. So cooperation allows everyone, allows anything to learn from each other and develop solutions that are more likely to be successful. So cooperation help it helps generally to uh, make you set your paths right for developing solutions. So by working together with the medical health professionals then, we ensure that our AI solutions are meeting the needs and uh, requirements for all user bases. So yes, there is one next big thing here. Um, you may have, you may have asking yourself some questions that, so how then can I understand, or how then can I identify and challenge these biases in our products? Educate yourself, you seek knowledge, in research and especially why I like conferences like this is that the fact that um, conferences like this like Django Conf US they emphasize diversity in all aspects so make sure you seek knowledge you ask some people you educate yourself and team especially your team members about bias and its, uh, and its impact so one way, one way through that is through conferences like this where you get talks and you on inclusivity and diversity generally are encouraged. The second one is you seek feedbacks from your project product. I'm sure as a designer, as a product designer, you don't want to miss this. You need to hear from people, you need to hear their honest opinions on what they think about your product. There is this community then I have my, at my disposal. There is this group I joined. One thing we do there is when you de designing your product, when you um, conceiving the plan already, or when you even done you share your product to the, to the group and one thing they do there is that you receive a lot of comments, you receive a lot of opinions from people, okay, do this, do this, do that, do that, improve on this, um, take care of this, you're missing out on this. So these are the things they, they challenge your lab group, they tell you, people from different backgrounds are, are, they are dealing with this and you know when you, when you implement opinions from people from different backgrounds, you can take care of this bias. So, then I had to share my product then, the speech text analytic app, and I received a lot of comments and feedback from it, which was the reason, or which was why I had to go back to the product and improve accessibility features there. So one thing again that we need to understand is why inclusivity is important, the benefit of an inclusive environment or the benefit of an inclusive product generally. One is that it promotes innovation and diversity or innovation and creativity generally. And it fosters a sense of belonging in the team. You know, people, they feel welcomed. When they feel welcomed in a new community, they, they tend to grow, they tend to contribute as much as they possibly can. So again, inclusivity is very important in the fact that it creates a more diverse and representative user base. And secondly, it leads to 
a more innovative and impact, impactful product. Lastly, it fosters a sense of belonging when you welcome them nicely, you welcome people from different backgrounds nicely, they feel, uh, they feel relaxed and they are able to contribute as much as they can. So other things that we can possibly stand to benefit from inclusive products or welcoming people from diverse backgrounds is, trust me, you don't want to jump with any of this, is that there is increase in user satisfaction and engagement and two, you have expanded market speech and customer base and third, we have enhanced reputation and brand image. You want your product to have a good impression on people, so you must make sure that it's as inclusive as possible. So generally when we say bias, 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 we mean excluding people and intersectionality is another big thing. You including people, interconnecting people from diverse backgrounds. So when we have bias on one hand, we have intersectionality as well as another hand. So two separate things here: bias and intersectionality. So you probably are probably asking yourself what are the steps I need to take, what are the break this unconscious bias to mitigate these biases that I possibly can have or experience in my products or in community building. So one thing again I mentioned is you educate yourself, you uh, reach out to people, you ask questions, you make sure you are not missing out on conferences like this. Because conferences like this, I believe, and I strongly note that, is that they, uh, they encourage diversity from all ends. Because I know personally that at this conference we have people from different walks of lives here. So, um, different walks of life rather. To actively seek diverse perspective, you ask from people, their opinions, People from not from your zone actually, access from their opinions. You want to hear about what people think about your products, and also as a thought step, you use data driven solution, um, making decision making rather to minimize or maximize bias, minimize rather bias and further development. And lastly, you create an inclusive and safe environment for people to flourish. So there could be some other ones where I believe every other one is basically under these points that I mentioned, the three points. So lastly, you create an inclusive and safe environment for people to flourish. Okay, um, I have here some situations where we can identify and challenge these bias. Here I painted, of course, um, I'll be sharing this slide after this talk, so you can check through, read through. So here I painted a scenario on this page of a conversation between a job applicant and let me say an inclusive inclusivity advocate. So I should say that the question here was asked by the applicant on what they would like to see in a diversity statement. And the response from the manager regarding the, about the diversity culture in place at the workplace was that well, let me just call the conversation itself. The question is question coming from the job applicant rather is what would you like to see in a diversity statement from a job applicant? So now Here's a response from the advocate. I would like to see something that honestly reflects the applicant's true experience. If someone were to write me, I've been in the environment that have not been visibly diverse, and it's relatively recent that I've become aware of how important diversity and inclusivity are to fostering student success. That would completely blow me away. So the response from the um, inclusivity advocate is stating that if someone were to write this for him or her, he or she would be completely blown away. I would really be impressed by someone able to be transparent about the process and eagerness to continue growing because we are all a work in progress when it comes to addressing equity and inclusion. So what the conversation here is actually pointing out is that in our different workplace, there are some proactive steps we can put in place that will involve conducting diversity audits and implementing inclusive design practices and possibly, of course, fostering the culture of inclusion and diversity in our, in our teams. So when we are addressing unconscious bias in our products or in community building together, it's important that we are aware of these common pitfalls. There are some pitfalls that are very common, which of course they are not your fault, but we need to be very careful of. Number one is you are assuming that all users they have the same needs and experiences. I mentioned earlier about my Initial impression when I was working with Data Science Nigeria to work on an health based AI solution, my thoughts was just like, okay, why don't they just leave us to work on this individually? Why would they not just leave us to work on this and get over it? So, one thing you should be careful of is that 
you avoid assuming that every user they have the same um, needs and experiences. Please avoid that. The second, that is a very, very dangerous thing to do. Please do not ignore the, the fact that feedback from people, they are very important in steps in improving your product. If you ignore feedback, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm even sure you're not going to do that. So control that actively. You um, seek and listen to feedback from people. You hear from their opinions, from your underrepresented groups in tech or in your, probably your zone. So now, what is that big impact of inclusion of products? What exactly is that big impact of, um, of product on, of inclusion rather on products? Products generally that prioritize inclusion from people, they, um, they have higher chances of success. Yeah. So generally products that prioritize inclusions they have higher chances of success. It's just not comparable to most would not. It's, it's very simple as that. It's not even comparable to products that do not encourage opinions from other people. You cannot compare the success of the products that um, that improved or that improves on um, people's opinion compared to products that was just built and that's all. So we have here building inclusive tech communities. Why is it so important for us to build the communities that are very inclusive? Just like you travel to a place that you have not been to before, you travel to a country that you have never been to before, you feel so strange for you to even interact. Honestly, for most people, I, I would say it's very difficult for you to interact. You can't just meet people on the way and talk to them. So when you travel to a place you've not been to before, you feel so strange, you feel like a stranger, which is not your fault. So, so also in the case of inclusive, inclusive tech communities, it's inclusive tech community generally is important because it creates a positive and supportive environment for people to flourish where everyone feels safe, where everyone feels welcome and valued. It generally fosters diversity, promotes innovation and leads to better products and solutions. And here we have some benefits that it provides opportunities for collaboration, knowledge sharing and learning from diverse perspectives. It attracts a wider talent pool and improve employee satisfaction and retention. And generally, it contributes to, to a more equitable industry. And very importantly, here we have a lot of good leadership in this community. It's very important that we have good leaders because they play a very crucial and important role in setting the tone. What do I mean by setting the tone? I mean the culture and the values of the community. When you have good leaders, they set good tone for these things in these communities, in this, in this environment. So, um, one big thing here again is inclusion beyond the tech industry. You know, at, at conferences like this, that we say that inclus inclusivity is um, apparent. And you know, since, since the beginning of this talk, I've been saying tech, this, tech, 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 that. And it seems as though we have inclusivity or we promote inclusivity only in the tech industry. You know, even in different uh, professions, in different sectors in the country, we have in government, in healthcare, in public policy, inclusivity also is something that should be encouraged. So, um, when I was mentioning earlier about an experience of working on health through tech projects, that is basically tech in health and the same vein, health employing tech skills. So, they work together. So, it's not only in tech that we have inclusivity to be encouraged, we need to have inclusivity beyond the tech industry, beyond the borders of tech. So if you're here and you're not a tech person, you're not, tech is not your zone, the rest, the rest are sure that you need to uh, include, you need to promote diversity in your teams as well. It's not only tech that we need to have that encouraged. So um, let me say, like a recap, a summary of everything that I've been saying for the past 10 to 15 minutes now. I mentioned at the beginning that addressing unconscious bias, addressing these biases is very crucial for building inclusive tech products and communities. Secondly, I mentioned that understanding diverse needs and experiences is essential for creating more inclusive communities and more inclusive products. Third, I mentioned some common pitfalls that can we can know, we need to know to help us in mitigating these biases in product development and community building. And I mentioned some proactive steps that we can take to mitigate these biases. Number one, again, consciously educate yourself. Consciously educate your team members on 
why it's important that we have inclusive products, why it's important for us to encourage inclusivity in communities. And one good way that I know, of course, is when you attend conferences like this, that diversity from all perspectives is encouraged. You feel a sense of um, entitlement, you feel a sense of, okay, I must do this, I must encourage this in my team. And also, you need to implement inclusive design practices to ensure that your products meet the needs of every person. And you create an opportunity for diverse voices to be heard and included in your decision making processes in your workplace. And also, regularly educate, evaluate, and address bias in product development and community building efforts. So, at the end of this slide, I attached a demo video of my speech text analysis can just like a one minute or two minutes video. I attached the demo video. So you can do well to check it out. Not a full fledged project actually. But you can do well to check the demo out. So I think I should put an end to this now. Once again you can connect with me on my social media handles. You can check out my LinkedIn Victor Ujobi and on Twitter or X as we have it. <laughs> X you can connect with me and Reach out to me personally if you want to ask some questions. We have some things you need to discuss with me generally. You can reach out to me and I'll do well to um, reply to as many and as many as possible you can. You can also post about me, you can also tweet about me and my talk using the general hashtag. So once again I would like to thank the program committee for making this possible and for making this really seamless. So sorry I'm not going to get in person, but I believe you have an um awesome time with me. So thank you all for having me. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the